Kinoko, this is a game that I knew absolutely nothing about until I saw a copy at the friendly local game store and I decided to buy it mainly because the box uh, is very small. It's a very portable game, I was going to visit a friend in Connecticut and uh, we were going to play a lot of games and so I just went to look for new games to try that I could travel with. This has turned out to be a very pleasant surprise. You have here a very simple, very light game that can play in a couple of minutes. Each round is going to be kind of like, um, like, like love letter kind of length. Sometimes less, sometimes a little bit more. And you play a couple of rounds to finish the game. So I'd say a round is a couple of minutes, a full game maybe is like 15, 20 minutes. Very light filler, and the quickest way to describe what we're talking about is competitive anabi, in the sense that you will have a hand of cards that will be facing the opponent, and the opponents have their own hand of cards that are facing out, so you can see everybody's cards, which is why I place those two sets up, because if I'm playing the game, I'll be able to see them, and I don't see my own cards. And yeah, it's about weird anthropomorphic mushrooms that look pretty cute. Each player also receives a card indicating a type of mushroom, and that is given to each player's secret at the beginning of the game. Plus, there are two secret or two face-down sets. Think of them as hands and non-playing characters. There are two of them in the middle of the table. So the cards will always be in sets numbers 1, 2, or 3, and from time to time you'll be able to, to swap cards and then you'll swap always a 1 with a 1, a 2 with a 2, and so on and so forth. So there's always a set of 1, 2, 3 in each player's hand, plus again these two down there, if that's, for example, what I've decided to do. Which of course didn't give me any new information, or did it? Maybe I knew what that was because somebody swapped it previously. Plus, there is a kind of mushroom that uh, we select randomly each round, and that is the forbidden kind. Meaning that at the end of the round, you will have a penalty of minus one point if there is at least one of those in your hand. What is the purpose of the game, by the way? To create a set of your own kind of mushroom. Uh, so, if there is a one purple, two purple, three purple in a single set, Anywhere, doesn't have to be mine, I win the round and I score two points. And so basically it will take your turn and after that you can call the end of the round. At that point all hands are revealed and if your set is present anywhere, very often it will be in someone's hand, then you score two points. It can also be this in here, if you're able to put it there, that's just kind of neat because it's less obvious. People after a while can figure out, oh my gosh, Mark is trying to go for a certain color. If I can sneak it in there, it is um, a little more sneaky that way. Now, um, if you call the end of the round because you think you have it and you don't, then everybody else scores a point, but I still have to see that happen. Now, when it is your turn, players will alternate taking turns, you roll these three dice. Most of the results will be numbers, and when you see, and after that, after you roll the dice, you choose one of the available actions and you take that action. If you choose a number as your action, one, two, or three, you can swap any two cards of the corresponding kind. For them to say, hey, my dear friend Camilla, let's switch threes, for example, and then we do that. And I have to remember that my tree is purple, because remember, I can't see that. Or I could have chosen this one and then ask uh, to my, and swap, or ask any player to swap any two. Remember, these are in play. Oh, now that's interesting. I see there's a purple there. I know I have that one. I wish I knew where the one purple is because that would bring me closer to victory. Other symbols are you can ask the two players to swap cards. Usually you want to swap your hand with somebody else so you can finally see your hand. Another symbol is to re-roll all the dice. And then this is the most important one. You can peek at any one card. Oh, fascinating. So that's the idea. So there definitely is a random element because of this. It may be that you have formed your set and or you are like one card away from forming your set and you don't get the, the right numbers to swap the needed ones and that's fine. But again, the game is so simple. If you lose a round because of this one roll, it's not a big deal. It's not going to be super frustrating. Um, it's a 
disproportionately good game. It is impressive what a good filler you're gonna have with basically like what 15 cards. So that's uh, of course there's an extra mushroom field play with four players. You could play with two, but why would you? It's a lot more fun with three or four, and that's how he played it. And for a 3-4 player filler that you can explain in under 5 minutes, you can play in 10, 15, 20 minutes, it's just so impressive. Because again, sure it's a filler, it's not going to be, you know, super complicated or deep. But there are enough and fun, interesting decisions. There is just a little bit of bluffing, a little bit of memory, uh, trying to figure out what the opponents are trying to do. And so if I can try to build my set while also I can disrupt what I think is yours, all the best. Uh, I know my set is somewhere, should I call it now or check that I don't have any poisonous things in my hand because then instead of the two points that would really score for having my set ready, uh, I, it's only one because I get the penalty. So should I score it now and risk a penalty or make sure that I don't get a penalty but then by the time I get it, I, I don't have any penalty mushrooms in my hand. Maybe my set has been messed up by somebody. A lot of nice, interesting wrinkles there. Again, sure, there is a random element here, but everybody's going to roll dice so many times that, you know, you're going to see a curve. Things things are going to even themselves out. In between, a little bit of logic, a little bit of bluffing, a little bit of memory, and a little bit of luck, this game has a little bit of a lot of good things that, again, they are combined well in a way that everybody played it. But just like at the beginning, like, sure, let's play this. And everybody was like, wow, there's more here than we thought. It's an incredibly elegant, entertaining, fun filler. In the filler category, uh, I will recommend it so highly because it was a, such a surprise, such a joy. It definitely has become quickly one of my favorite fillers. Kinoko, small box, really good filler.